Algebra 1, Unit 2, Lesson 4, Simplifying by Combining Like Terms. So in this lesson, we want to simplify expressions by combining like terms and then add and subtract polynomials. So a term is either a number, a variable, a product, a quotient of numbers and variables that are added or subtracted from each other. So you're going to look at the pluses and minuses that separate the pieces, and each one of those pieces will be a term. A polynomial is just a sum of those terms. There can't be any variables in the denominator, and they have to have whole number exponents only, so no negative exponents, which would put them in the denominator. A monomial is a polynomial with one term. A binomial is a polynomial with two terms. A trinomial is a polynomial with three terms. There are other names that are used for higher terms. We're not going to really worry about those. We'll say four terms, five terms, and so on. The degree of a single term, or monomial, is the sum of the exponents of all of its variables. And then for a whole polynomial, which is made up of monomials added or subtracted from each other, we're going to take the greatest degree of any term that there is. If it's just a number, the degree is zero. So if there's only one variable, then there are special numbers used for the lower degrees. If it's a degree zero, it's constant. Degree 1, or the first degree, is linear. Second degree is quadratic. Third degree is cubic. There's fourth degree, which is quintic. And, or sorry, f fourth, which is, uh, yeah, quintic. And five with the, I don't know, I can't even think at the moment. But there are other names for the higher ones, but we'll only use up until third degree. So now we're going to look at these. How many terms are? Well, there are two separating ones. There are three terms. There's 5x squared, 3x, and 6. That has three terms, and then this has degree 2, this has degree 1, that has degree 0. We take the highest one, which is 2. So we say, well, we look at the degree, that's quadratic, the special name. So we would say this is a quadratic, and then we look at how many terms for three terms, that's a trinomial. For this next one, we look, this has an exponent of 1 and 1, so we add those, that gives us 2. This is 1 and 2, that gives us 3. 1 and 1 gives us 2, and this only has 1. We take the highest of those, so that's a third degree polynomial, and then there are 1, 2, 3 signs, so there are 1, 2, 3, 4 pieces, so we would say that's a third degree polynomial with four terms. We don't talk about being a cubic here because there are more than one variable. It's only used for these when you have a single variable. This one has degree 5 because the exponents are 2 and 3, so you add them up with 5. It's only got one term because it's just one thing. So you would say this is a fifth degree. And now the term numbers are used no matter what. These only use when there's one variable. These use regardless. This is a fifth degree trinomial. I mean, sorry, monomial because there's only one term there. All right, this one has degree three. This one has degree one. So we has, say it has degree three, the larger one. There are two terms. So degree three now has only got one variable. So we would say this is a cubic. Two terms is binomial. So this is a cubic binomial. Now like terms are terms that have the same variables with a particular variable having the same power. So you can't say x and x squared are like terms. The variables are the same, but they have different powers. So both things have to be the same. Same variable, same powers. So if you look at 4x squared, the variable is x. It's squared. You're looking for another x squared term that's like it. So you have 4x squared and minus 3x squared are like terms. Then you have a 6x. 6x, you want just an x. That would be a 4x. By the way, if there's a negative, you want to take that with it in front. Positives, of course, you can just ignore when you're doing them. And then all numbers are like terms. This is a minus 3 and a minus 7. So make sure you're taking any negative signs in front with the term because it's like plus or minus 7. Technically, the terms are the ones you're adding, so the subtraction you have to use as part of the coefficient. And then here we have a 4x squared y. Are there any other ones that have an x squared with a y? Yes, so that's a 4x squared y. 
and a 5x squared y. 7xy, are there any with just an x and a y? Yes, there's a minus 4xy, so those would also be like terms. And then finally, you have an 8xy squared, which doesn't have anything like with it. The coefficients of the numbers in front, like the coefficients here are 4, 6, minus 3, minus 3, and 4. Actually, you don't consider that a coefficient because it has to be in front of a variable. Otherwise, those are considered constants, so the minus 3 and the minus 7 are considered constants. A simplified expression is when there are no parentheses and all the like terms have to be combined together. You combine them by either adding or subtracting. So this is like 4x squared minus 3x squared. You would combine those by doing 4 minus 3. And then we also want them in standard form, even if it doesn't say it, that it's technically part of simplifying. Standard form is when at least you have one variable, you write them in decreasing order of terms. So like here we had 2, 1, and 0. That's in standard order. That's the way you want to put them. So now it says simplify each expression if possible. If you look at this, there's a degree of 2, 1, 0, and 3. So you can't simplify them technically in the sense that there are no like terms, but you do want to put them in standard order. You put the cube term, then the squared, then the one with a power of 1, and then the constant at the end. If you have 6xy, 3xy squared, minus 7xy, and 8x, you're going to combine those because you have 6xy is like with minus 7xy, so those are the like terms. We need to combine those two. 3xy squared and then 6 minus 7 is a minus 1, so you get minus xy and then plus 8x. So go ahead and try to do this one, see if you can identify the like terms and then combine them. Yes, you have 4x squared with a minus 3x squared. 4 minus 3 is a positive 1. We don't write that 1 in front. Then we have a positive 6x and a plus 4x. 6 plus 4 is 10, so that's a 10x. Finally, we have minus 3 and minus 7. Minus 3 minus 7 is minus 10. Now do the next one. So we're looking for like terms. We have the 4x squared y. We identified before that was with five, a plus 5x squared y. 4 plus 5 is 9, so that's a 9x squared y. Then we have xy terms. There's a 7 and a minus 4. 7 minus 4 is a positive 3x, so that's why there's a plus. And then finally we have the one that can't be combined. That's an 8xy squared. So now to add or subtract polynomials, you're first going to distribute any minus or any numbers outside of the parentheses to each term that's inside. And if there aren't any numbers outside and you're adding, then you simply remove the parentheses. If there's a number out in front, then of course you have to use the distributive property. So here this is just a 5 and then a minus. The first polynomial stays the same. The second one, because you're subtracting, it changes the sign of everything in there because that's like plus a minus and you're distributing that minus 1 that's multiplied in front. That's what it's like you're distributing that minus 1 to each term. So this was a positive inside becomes a minus, this was a minus becomes a plus, this was a minus becomes a plus, this plus becomes a minus. Now if that's adding, it doesn't. That's only for subtraction where that's distributed. Pluses won't change any signs. Then we're looking for like terms. 5 and plus 2 would give me, or sorry, 5 and the minus 2 will give me a 3. 4 and plus 6 is 10. Minus 8 plus 3 is minus 5 and 3 and minus 5 is minus 2. For the next one, this one isn't in parentheses at all, but we have this minus 5 times something. The minus must go with that number, so now you're distributing that minus 5 to each term in there. Minus 5 times 2x squared is minus 10x squared. Minus 5 times 4x is minus 20x, and minus 5 times minus 3 is plus 15. Then you're looking for the like terms. So there's a 6x cubed, but no other x cubed terms. So you just have 6x cubed. Again, we want to go in order, so they're in standard order. We have minus 5x squared and minus 10x squared. Minus 5 minus 10 is minus 15. We have a plus 10x 
and a minus 20x. 10 minus 20 is minus 10, so we get minus 10x, and minus 9 plus 15 is plus 6. For the last one, we have a 2 out in front, so we need to take the 2 and multiply by each thing on the inside first. 2 times 7 is 14, 2 times minus 5 is minus 10, and 2 times minus 2 is minus 4, making sure that we keep the variable that goes with it. This is a plus something. Again, because we're adding and there's no number out front, you can simply remove the parentheses from that and write it down. Then we're looking at like terms, and we want to go in the order first. So here's an x cubed term. There's no other like it. We put the x cubed first. Then we have a 14x squared and a plus 4x squared. That will give us a plus 18. 4 plus 4 is 18. We have a minus 10x and a minus 5x. Minus 10 minus 5 is minus 15x. And finally, we have the two constant terms, minus 4 and minus 6. We combine those minus 4 minus 6 is minus 10.